वेलकम टू सीज द मेन्स बाय राज मल्होत्राज आई एस अकेडमी आई एम सुरभी सरदाना एंड आई विल बी टेकिंग दिस डेली आंसर राइटिंग इनिशिएटिव फॉर टुडे दैट इज डे वन ऑफ आर क्वेश्चन एंड आंसर सीरीज वी विल बी टेकिंग अ सब टॉपिक फ्रॉम जी एस पेपर वन एंड द सब टॉपिक फॉर टुडे इज इफेक्ट्स ऑफ ग्लोबलाइजेशन ऑन इंडियन सोसाइटी वी हैव अटैच अ स्केड्यूल for next 30 days in the description below due to some reasons it wasn't available in yesterday's video but now it has been uploaded on our telegram channel you can download it and keep it with yourselves so that your you can plan your studies accordingly so that you know that which sub topic has to be taken for the next day before we discuss today's question i recommend to you that please keep a paper and pen or pencil with you so that you can make notes side by side you can not note down your points that come to your mind on seeing the question so as i i change the screen and i display the question just pause the video for like 2 minutes and note down whatever comes to your mind regarding that question so here is the question for today what is central bank digital currency cbdc what would be its implications on the indian society discuss this question has to be answered in 250 words and it will it will get you 15 marks as you can see this particular question does not contain the word global or globalization or anything like that as is mentioned in the syllabus so how do we recognize such questions and how do we prepare for this particular sub topic by this sub topic in the syllabus upsc means that there would be some phenomena going on on a global scale on the global level and their direct impacts on indian society should be understood and be analyzed by an aspirant in general so when we talk about cbdc central bank digital currency we have to be aware of this fact that virtual currencies like cryptocurrency bitcoin ethereum and things like that have been going on floating in the global market for almost a decade now and this has been this has been a very huge concern for the central banks and the governments of various countries china has itself come up with a digital currency of its own and now india in its like uh, the finance minister in her latest budget speech announced that india will also be launching its digital currency very soon so digital currency issued by a central bank of a country is called central bank digital currency what does it what impacts does it have directly on the society especially on the indian society as it has been asked here this has to be assessed by us we need to know about what a cbdc is and what implications we need to talk about here so here i am underlining the keyword indian society cbdc is obviously the keyword discuss is the directive here as we talked about yesterday that discuss is basically a written debate so we'll talk about both sides of the coin and this question is a long one it has to be answered in 250 words so take your time to note down some of the important points that come to your mind after reading this question once you have noted down the points prepare a structure for your answer and then proceed to writing your answer as i told earlier you can pause the video for a few minutes talking about this question the term central bank digital currency is from economy but since it is a part of gs paper 1 this is not an economic question this is a question from the society perspective so you don't have to talk a lot about the economics perspective of it though it is from current affairs and all the articles that you would be reading nowadays would be discussing the only the economic perspective of it but here we are to talk about what are its implications on indian society in general so you have to answer it from a societal perspective so that's how reading the syllabus and practicing questions can polish your answers now 
if UPSC does ask you this kind of question, which it has already asked before for cryptocurrency for 2021 mains paper, when UPSC puts such kind of questions in front of you, you just need to get back to the syllabus and see that UPSC is not testing just your knowledge. The knowledge has to be there. The studying and reading part has to be done. But UPSC also tends to assess your analyzing power. Whatever you read, are you able to connect it to the general public, to the society in general, to general events around you? Are you able to fathom through it? So that is what the mains paper is about. This is honestly a very tough question to start with for the very first day. But this is how UPSC would surprise you or any state civil services exam might surprise you. And it's better to develop or uh, to go undergo training for practicing these kind of questions and answers from the first day itself. The general structure of an answer to any question consists of an introduction, some body paragraphs, whether uh, in the subjective format or in, or in like objective points. So, and followed by a conclusion or a way forward. So here we'll be step by step building on the introduction body and we'll see what conclusion can we write for this answer with the keyword discuss. Since it has already been used in the question, so just remember that it, whatever is being talked about here, the central bank digital currency, you need to talk about the downside of it and the benefits of it both. If you wa don't want to talk about the downside, at least talk about the challenges of introducing CBDC or digital rupee in short. As you can see that this question contains two parts to it. The first part demands you to define central bank digital currency or CBDC in general. Here you don't have to talk just about digital rupee, but make sure after talking about CBDC, you extend that paragraph to talk about the digital rupee itself because that's why this question has been put in place. And once you start talking about digital rupee, go on to mention the benefits and challenges associated for the Indian society due to digital rupee. So first of all, let's see how do we answer the first part of this question. What is central bank digital currency? You could start by defining what is a central bank digital currency. Here, let's see what's the introduction. So here, I've started with defining currency itself. In general, currency is a system of money backed by a government. It is typically made up of coins and paper notes. Currency is a medium of exchange, meaning that it is, it is the basis for various kinds of trade and transactions. So here, as you can see that here we have talked about the basic definition, the ongoing definition of a currency, which has been going for decades and centuries. We've talked about what actually a currency is. So currency basically means something that is that is backed by the central government. So here you're making a point in the next lines that the digital currency or central bank digital currency would be backed by the government by the central bank of the country and this has to be mentioned most importantly next we further go on to defining cbdc a central bank digital currency is an electronic record or a digital token of a country's official currency so here you have made your point to the examiner that you understand what is the definition of a digital currency. You know that it is backed by a central bank and it is part of the official money that the fiat money that's been circulating is in the system. So this will form your introduction, go through it, read it again and again and frame your own introduction if possible. So, coming to linkage points, what are linkage points? See, you cannot just start with one paragraph and introduce some other paragraph all of, all of a sudden. Whatever you introduce, your introduction has to talk about, has to answer what has been asked in the question 
and once you start towards the once you start ending your introduction once you go towards the end of your introduction you need to create space for extending your answer further whatever you're going to talk about whether the benefits or disadvantages or even if you're trying to end a question there needs to be a proper linkage in all parts of your question so as we talked about introduction before this first paragraph is about introduction it addresses the first part of your question what is central bank digital currency here we have defined currency in general and then we have taken the advantage of definition of currency to define cbdc central bank digital currency now in the second paragraph we go on to talk about central bank digital currencies what are they and why are they important what is their stage of development so central bank digital currencies as of now they are in research mode research mode by 80% of central banks of the world they are still under various stages of development all around the globe no central bank in particular knows how to implement it so uh, whatever the countries like china who are implementing digital currencies they are still under pilot mode so once you have that information you need to talk about it you need to show it to the examiner that you know about digital currencies and what's happening around them so just start by mentioning that cb uh, cbdcs are in various stages of development around the world and uh, talk about this development india's own central bank digital currency that is see once once you have written the extended definition of something you don't need to write the extended definition again and again so as you will see in this definition here i have used the full form of central bank digital currency once and then in the entire answer i'm just using the short form cbdc so it makes the uh, it makes it easy for the examiner to read and it also saves you on the word limit part so just use this technique so uh talk about what is this uh, development of cbdc in india once you've talked about that it's being researched upon all around the globe and india has already decided to launch its own digital rupee then you can go on to talk about the benefits of this digital currency for the society now something that has been decided so lo for so long something that has been discussed for so long and then reached to a decision by the government now the government has decided to launch its own digital currency so for sure there are benefits for the society so once you talk about that the government has planned to launch the digital currency you can straight away introduce one line that uh, these are the following benefits of uh, central bank digital currency for the indian society so here we read the linkage points first CBDCs are in various stages of development around the world. India's own CBDC that is digital rupee will be launched in 2022 to 23 which is next financial year. The impact of CBDCs is being researched upon as we talked about earlier it is still in research stage. However, however a digital rupee can have the following positive implications. on indian society in general so here we have introduced that introduction line for the benefits that we will that we will be discussing about so as i have written here just start writing the positive side after this line right after this line just start down writing the positive points that you can think of it's always beneficial to write down in points it's uh, especially when the uh, word limit is 250 words and the keywords are like discuss like when you have in, uh, when you have to introduce both sides of the argument it's better to discuss in points it's better to write your answer in points because it makes it easier for the examination examiner to judge your answer and it also gets you more marks on the answer so here as you can see there are four broad benefits we will, will be talking about since this term is from economy this is an this is an econ this is an economics question that has been put into the syllabus of gs paper 1 part society so the answer has uh, answer 
would be very general like the benefits and the disadvantages would be very general you don't have to freak out about oh my god i have not read any article on this or i have not prepared this particular topic from a societal perspective the benefits or the challenges associated with any technology remain the same this is definitely a breakthrough breakthrough technology so the benefits also we'll be talking about here so that it becomes easier for you as you will see that these are very general points and any answer can be handled very easily if you remain confident so as we know that financial inclusion is a very big challenge for the indian society in general so the government has also introduced many schemes banks have done uh, banks have taken so many steps to introduce financial to induce financial inclusion in the country but there is a vast majority of our population which is either unbanked or underbanked they do have bank accounts but they do not have access to them or banking facilities in general so the first point that should come to your mind is that if a digital currency is introduced you do not need people to take cash to the banks and have deposits there and you do not need people to go to the banks and uh, extract their cash out of there or to atms or anything like that you do not need so much infrastructure in place if you have digital currency so with the onset of digital rupee this issue of financial inclusion can be tackled so our first point first point talks about the talks about the question of financial inclusion digital currency can simplify the implementation of monetary and fiscal policy and promote financial inclusion in the economy by bringing the unbanked into the financial system use this unbanked as a keyword underline it when you are writing your answers the second point is that physical currency like the cash that we have in our in flowing into our sy economic system right now it requires printing it needs paper or polymer for printing it requires the cost of transportation and storage so there is a lot of there are a lot of expenses involved there and these expenses are, have been in question in the past uh, in the past many years or i think forever cash money or physical money pay uh, uh, physical money is a huge burden on the government on the central bank on the central bank of any country so with the introduction of digital currency millions and millions of rupees that go into printing of physical currency that go into the circulation of cash and storage and handling all the system handling all the system containing physic uh, physical uh, money it can be prevented and that money can be used for the betterment of society so your second point second benefit is it will reduce the cost of printing transporting and storing physical currency which can be used for the betterment and development of the society in general the third point here is that india shares its borders with many countries and um, every now and then there have been issues of counterfeiting of notes counterfeiting of uh, indian rupee notes demonetization uh, was an act uh, demonetization was implemented by the government to prevent this if we can introduce digital digital currency if we introduce a digital currency in the into the economic system this counterfeiting of notes can be successfully prevented so our third point is it reduces the scope of counterfeiting of currency here this is the keyword so counterfeiting of currency notes can be prevented the fourth point here is that illegal or illicit activities such as human trafficking terrorism or drug trade these adversely affect any society in general and indian society in particular because we have porous borders and we have a very diverse society and there are many unprivileged sections unprivileged sections of the society which are directly imp Im uh, impacted by these illicit activities so what happens in general is that when there is a lot of cash currency flowing in the economy it is very hard to it is very hard to find the target points where the crime originates from 
because cash to be identified needs tracking numbers if you introduce digital currency with the help of digital rupee these activities can be prevented and to a certain extent they can also be traced very much efficiently as compared to cash so uh, our next point is that it can prevent illicit activities such as drug trade terrorism human trafficking because it will exist in a digital format and it will not require any serial numbers for tracking in this fourth point what are the keywords that you need to underline the activities that can be prevented illicit activity if you want you can uh, underline the whole of the bracket in general so here were the four these were the four benefits that we talked about you also need to adhere to the word limit we already had one introduction paragraph one paragraph for the linkage points and now we have come on to talk about the benefits the benefits part is done since it's a, it is a discuss question and this is a move that's been introduced by the government so when we are talking about the negative side of it we will not say that what are the disadvantages we'll say we'll write uh, our heading as that what are the challenges associated with digital rupee in general so let's proceed so you can uh, use one line that the following are the challenges associated with digital rupee in general and then write on write, uh, get on to write down the challenges that you think are possible so as you can see uh, on the screen that there are four challenges i have used here the benefits that we were talking about they were also four in number and the challenges are also four in number you can proceed on to write as many as you want but make sure that it gives a balanced view to your answer so using four points as positive and four points as negative it's a thumbs up for a good answer so the first challenge that comes to anyone's mind is that introducing digital currency is a very good move but illiteracy levels in india are very high and if illiteracy is not high digital illiteracy is very very high like most of the people don't even know how to operate basic upi apps in general and with the advent of social media and uh, things like that like uh, sharing of your digital identities sharing of financial identities there have been a lot of hacking cases there have been a lot of frauds so are we ready to introduce a digital currency at this point of time so this is the first challenge that comes to your mind that financial illiteracy digital illiteracy and accessibility accessibility to the right kind of technology like there is a huge difference in the accessibility of a person with an android phone with a good smartphone and uh, with a and in a person whose entire family has just one simple phone so that uh, i have in, i have included all these points in the first point itself whatever is so these discuss the technical aspects of the issue with the prevailing digital divide financial Ill illiteracy and inaccessibility to technology a digital currency could lead to another form of inequality in the society the next point that talks about the challenges associated with digital currency is privacy when you deal in cash when you have a 100 rupee note in your hand and you give it to the shopkeeper nobody just knows about it it's between you and the shopkeeper no one knows about it what you bought and for how much did you buy something but when it comes to digital rupee it will be governed by a ledger if it will be governed by a ledger so it could have issues of privacy of the citizens and this is an issue that will be talked about in the coming lectures and or in the coming discussions on our channel so when you are broadly talking about the challenges associated make sure that you use privacy as a challenge in the beginning itself because it's a major challenge also privacy has been recognized by the supreme court as a fundamental right uh, uh, that belongs to all the citizens so this is a very important challenge associated with the introduction of any form of digital assets digital currency
The next point is uh, what I talked about in the beginning uh, when we started talking about challenges that criminals could hack information of people and could misuse information of honest citizens. So this is a this is your next point. Criminals could hack and misuse information of people. So what do you want to highlight here? Hack and misuse information. And the fourth challenge is very general. For decades now, we have recognized money in form of cash. So we have been dealing in terms of cash as a society for decades. So will this digital currency, something that cannot be seen or felt by people, will it be accepted by people in general as a new form of money or as a new form of currency. So that remains a challenge and we'll see how the government seen, uh, how the government implements it. So your fourth challenge is acceptability as a new form of currency remains a question. Don't directly write there that people might not accept this as a new form of currency. Use a formal and a balanced kind of language. Just, uh, just like in this fourth point, acceptability as a new form of currency remains a question. Don't say it is not possible or it would be very hard. Just say it remains an issue. It remains a question. So now we have addressed both the parts of the question. We have defined what is a central bank digital currency. Then we proceeded on to discuss what is digital rupee and what are the government's plans about it. We discussed what are the benefits of introducing digital currency and then we moved on to uh, discuss about the challenges associated with it. Now you need to conclude it with a balance uh, conclusion paragraph like a conclusion that, that looks forward looking that gives a positive sense about your personality to the examiner that you have a forward looking approach and you are you are in favor of the government policies and you look forward how the government implements this in particular. So let's see. So to conclude, such challenges have been there before also like the challenges of privacy, financial inclusion, digital illiteracy. There was a time when uh, these payment wallets, they were not accessible, but with the introduction of apps like Bheem and then the with the introduction of UPI, uh, it is very much possible to operate or uh, to use digital, digital transactions even without having an Android phone. So the government over the years has successfully fought with such challenges and you need to mention this in your conclusion. So let's see, India has successfully transformed it itself into a more inclusive society over the years with the innovative ideas of Aadhaar direct benefit transfer dbt you if you want you can just uh, mention the full form of dbt here uh, dbt was very transformative the uh, always remember to use such uh, innovative practices that have been implemented by the government in the past just uh, create a list of such things and make sure that you use them in your conclusions so aadhaar dbt bheem upi these have been transformative initiatives by the government in the past and they have successfully on a very large scale helped the government fight with financial exclusion in the society. Digital rupee holds the potential of transforming lives provided a proper regulatory framework is put in place and all sections of society. Why am I uh, in, uh, concluding it by writing all sections of society because this is a question of society and you have to talk about digital rupee with regards to the society in general. So here you need to mention that if all sections of society are taken together, digital rupee can prove to be a very transformative step, which it will prove to be because it has been backed by the government now. So digital rupee holds the potential of transforming lives provided a proper regulatory framework is put in place and all sections of the society are gradually included in the shift. So we have to progress as a society with all the initiatives that we take. So we need to take all the sections of the society together and gradually involve all sections of the society. So we don't end up, end up creating more social in inequalities in India. So that's how you conclude. 
go through uh, like download the presentation of this lecture go through the whole answer and just see what points have been addressed and try to frame your own answer here uh, i have included some previous year questions from uh, effects of globalization on indian society starting from like going back from 2021 to 2013 so these were the questions that were asked just uh, uh, when you're done with this video you can read them and you can get an idea of how upsc has been evolving its questions over the years as you can see in 2021 a similar question was asked on cryptocurrencies what is cryptocurrency you were asked to define it and how does it affect global society here they also asked about the global society in general has it been affecting indian society also so as you can see cryptocurrency uh, could be expected as a question in mains uh, like economics part of the mains but here they connected it to society and rightly so our question for today was also was also connecting this uh, these two parts so that's how you address such questions which require a lot of analysis but which can be easily answered if you are just aware of your gs subjects and a little bit of current affairs so just go through these previous year questions analyze them yes and try to write your own answer you can mail us your answers uh, for the feedback that our experts provide uh, by tomorrow 12 pm um, that is 9th of february 12 pm uh, try to send your answers before that and we'll respond back to you with our valuable feedback here's the email id on which you have to mail your answers rmiasmainswriting@gmail.com this will also be uh, this will also be available on our telegram channel send your answers only in pdf format so that we can respond back to you as soon as possible and uh, we'll meet tomorrow with another question as uh, as you can see in the schedule uh, you can download the schedule for yourself according to the schedule tomorrow we'll be taking a topic from gs paper 2 and we'll be back with another question till then go through this answer just look at what are the questions that upsc has been asking from this area this area and analyze previous year questions and write your own answer make sure that you write your own answer and send it to us share it with us and uh, as i told you can download the schedule it's there on our telegram channel and it will also be attached in the description and Today's presentation is also available on our Telegram channel. The link will be in the description below. So till till tomorrow, study well, work hard, and stay tuned. See you.